Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Irvin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 124, Stacked Line Chart, Dropped to Zero. Well, hey, Mike, today's question sent in uh, Patricia from CFO Magazine says, I understand how to fill the empty cells with NA if a formula is present. Uh, but in my chart, there's no formula or data in the future cells. They're just blank. And Patricia goes on, the hidden or empty cells choices in select data area uh, default to treat as zero and everything else is just grayed out. Well, that tells me something about uh, Patricia's chart because normally in a regular chart, just a regular line chart here, if we go to design, select data, hidden in empty cells, we could change those to gaps uh, and the future uh, cells would go away. I'm going to undo that, control Z. Uh, but in this chart, this chart is not a regular line chart, it is a stacked line chart. See the stacked item there. And when we go to uh, select data here, hidden in empty cells. Uh, she's right, everything else is grayed out. All right, so, uh, you know, my normal trick is, well, hey, let's just fill with equal NA, equal NA, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, control enter, uh, and it fixes the chart uh, as I would expect, but here it does not fix the chart. Oh uh, boy, so in a stacked line chart, it's not following the rules, the, the common trick that we I'll use. Now, Mike, before I see if you have a solution for this, let's just talk about uh, these NAs. You know, people say, well, I don't like the NAs because they, they print uh, poorly. And, you know, if I do control one and use the normal trick of three semicolons to hide the data, that would hide numbers, but it doesn't hide the NAs. I still have a trick, though, to prevent them from printing. We come here to page layout, click on print titles which is just a great shortcut way to get to the page setup sheet tab, cell errors as displayed, you change that to blank or even uh, two dashes, let's just go with blank, click OK, now uh, print preview, and then when we print this, you see that those future months will not print as NAs, they print as blank, uh, but OK, so this whole issue is moot if you have a stacked line chart because there doesn't appear to be any good way to make those future months uh, disappear in a stack of line chart. Mike, do you have a solution for this? Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, this is a great question here. We want to be able to enter numbers here and have labels and numbers appear on the chart. Now, I'm sure there's a much easier way to do it than the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it the old standby way, create a formula that creates a dynamic range, and then enter it into a defined name, and then put the defined names into the chart. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use the index function to look up the last cell reference in a range. And then I'm going to build a dynamic range formula. So I'm going to start with index. Now, index usually looks up a thing, like a number or a word or something like that. So I'm going to highlight the entire potential range, hit the F4, comma, and I want to look up the last number. So in the row num argument, I'm going to say, hey, match, find the relative position of the last number. Well, I'm going to use approximate match with a really big number. So uh, 9.99e plus 307, that's the approximation of the biggest number Excel knows. And then I'm going to go ahead and use this range right here. So what it'll do is it'll just keep looking. And when it can't find anything bigger, it'll get the last one. And that's the number it will return for a pro using approximate match. Now, if I enter this right here, of course index looks up the last number, right? But check this out. I'm going to put the index function into the context of a cell reference, and it will look up a cell reference instead of the item. Now I'm going to click on that B3 and put a colon here. You know, someone showed me how to put a colon in a formula like this and not get that extra B3, but I totally forgot what that trick is. Maybe someone will post a comment there. But I'm going to uh, lock that. Now check this out. That colon says to the index, hey, I don't want you to look up the thing. I want you to look up the cell reference. In essence, index is in the context of a cell reference. If I highlight this and hit the F9, it won't show me the cell references, but sure enough, it'll show me the values. If I start adding values out here, this thing will expand. Control-Z. I'm going to copy and then Control-Shift-Enter. Now I need to amend this for the east. I actually want the lookup range. Not, not the, I want the cell reference to be in 2, so I'm going to put a 2 here. 
and 2, 2. So I'm still going to base the match for all three ranges on the last row. So it's not until we put in the last number that the chart will adjust. All right, Control-Shift-Enter. And then I'm going to paste this here and change this to 1. 1. So the lookup range is changing. Even though it's going to determine the position down here, it'll get the uh, value from up there. Now I'm going to have to do this one by one into the defined name box. So I'll start with the months. Control-C. Control-F3 opens up the name manager. I'm going to say New. And I'm going to call it D-Month. And down here, I'm going to paste Control-V. Now I'm going to click OK and immediately click this uh, Collapse Down button to check and see. So I can check and see if the formulas work. And I'm going to close Control-C in Edit Mode, Control-F3, New. And I'm going to call this D-East. Oh, look, it's got the D-East there. So I'm going to come down here. Control V, click OK, check, escape, close, and then I'm going to come here. Roop. Control C, escape, Control F3, new, and look at that. I didn't know that. It's somehow picking that up. That is so cool. Click OK, check. All right, so we have three names. Now I'm going to come over here, and we have to go up to Design, Select Data. And very carefully, I'm going to start with the edit. I'm going to do each one of these. And the trick is, is that you have to highlight just the cell reference and leave the sheet reference. I'm going to hit the F3 key to paste my name, and this is D month. Now notice sheet reference and define name. I'm going to click OK, but I'm going to immediately click it to show what happens. It actually puts a workbook reference in, so that's supposed to happen. All right, so now I'm going to do this to West. Highlight very carefully just the cell reference. F3 to paste a name, D West. Click OK. So now I have East, Edit. Very carefully highlight those cell references. F3, D East. Click OK. Click OK. So now, as I add data, if I add the first bit of data here, it doesn't do anything, but then I add this one down here, and boom, it is working, and it picks up June. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Wow, Mike, that was brilliant. Equal B3 colon index, and the index then returns the cell reference. Uh, I've got nothing. I mean, well, OK, this is just so cheap. I want to take uh, this data here. Now, in this case, both are stacked line charts both pointing at that data. I'm going to take this data, I'm going to right click, I'm going to right drag to a new location. In the new location, I'm going to say link here. That's a great way to create a whole bunch of formulas that point up above. I'm going to uh, fake the West series into being uh, plus West plus East. And we'll copy that across. Uh, then I'll take this chart and make this chart use the uh, new fake data. Uh, which initially is uh, incorrect, but then we'll go to the Chart Tools Design, Change Chart Type, and change to not a stacked line, but just a regular old line with markers. And we get the same scale and same data that we have in the original chart, uh, but without the drop to zero. The drop to zero is just part of the uh, stacked line chart. So by changing uh, the underlying data to do what a stacked line chart is doing, uh, we get the answer. I don't know. That's really, really cheap. All right. Well, hey, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.